Hey guys, Crypto Dad here, and today I'm going to show you what to do when you end up with a pending transaction when you're trying to move your ETH or sell your ETH somewhere. So let's get going. Okay, so uh, Ethereum has reached all-time highs and uh, a lot of people might be thinking about cashing out or at the very least moving it somewhere. Uh, maybe from, uh, you've got it in cold storage and you need to move it out to uh, an exchange where you can sell it. So uh, some of the problems now with the uh, Ethereum network being so overloaded are starting to crop up. Uh, just like they are with the Bitcoin network and the Bitcoin blockchain. Being so overloaded lately, it's getting harder to make transactions, transaction times are taking longer, and the fees are going up. So uh, I wanted to show you how to get past this problem. So let's get going here. Okay, so we get here uh, at the big screen, and the first thing I'm going to do is plug in my uh, Ledger Nano S. Uh, because I have done several videos on how to store Ether, Bitcoin, Ripple, uh, Litecoin on the Ledger Nano S. So uh, this is the preferred choice of security conscious people for uh, hardware cold storage for their uh, cryptocurrency tokens. So uh, I'm going to show you how to get it off. So here we go. We plug this guy in. We'll enter our pin. Okay, and once we've entered our PIN, uh, we need to make sure that we've got Ethernum selected on the Ledger Nano S. So here we go, we hit both buttons with our finger, and we go into Ethereum. And I'm going to launch my Chrome browser. And I'll just go over here to the apps. We go over here to the uh, Ledger Wallet Ethereum. And let's take a look at our Ethereum wallet. As you can see, there were uh, several transactions that uh, went out. Uh, let me show you this one, I believe, from yesterday. Okay, if you click on it, it's going to take you to Etherscan, which is the blockchain explorer for the Ethereum network. And you'll see here that this particular transaction failed. I was trying to send one ETH. Now, this is what happened when I tried to send it directly from the Ledger Nano. Uh, and I've done a previous video on how we sort of overcome this issue. It's not really that it's out of gas. It may be, but I think it's more of a bug in the Ledger Nano Wallet app than it is anything else. Uh, there are uh, opinions for and against that, but uh, basically transactions are not properly uh, going out uh, from the Ledger Nano S when you're using Ethereum. So the workaround is the uh, My Ether Wallet site. But uh, I tried that yesterday and had this issue with a transaction that was pending indefinitely. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, I created a very small transaction with a very low gas fee so that I could demonstrate to you what happens when you have a pending transaction. Notice the, the fee is very low. This is just an example I set up so we can check out how to do the cancellation. Okay, so uh, we've got a really low transaction, and uh, they want to know, uh, do you want to cancel it, right? So we've used our transaction hash to locate the pending transaction, and it's been pending all day. So what we will do is we just go down here uh, to Ledger Wallet, and we're going to connect to Ledger again. And it asks us to unlock the wallet. We'll say yes. And there, they have filled in all of this information for us. And basically what they're doing is they're sending a zero transaction back to the original address, which is going to cancel our pending transaction. You don't need to change any of these. Just leave them the way they are. They have uh, put in everything you need. You don't need to touch anything. So we just click Generate Transaction. And it's going to ask us to confirm on our device. You'll notice that it's zero. Okay. 
All right. So uh, what you can, what you see here, and this is from yesterday, but uh, I just want to illustrate. Once you have uh, canceled that pending transaction, you'll just see the uh, zero ETH that came back in on itself, and that was enough to cancel your pending transaction. Um, and you'll see there there was a small gas charge here. All right, we had a successful transaction. They charged me 84 cents, but I was trying to send uh, about a thousand dollars. I was sending one ETH, which was worth about a thousand dollars. So it was a small price to pay, uh, you know, 84 cents to get my thousand dollars out of the queue, so that I could uh, retry my transaction and get it done. So uh, that's it, guys. Okay. So uh, basically what we're going to need to do to get our transaction to go out is to use the My Ether Wallet website. Okay, and I've used this previously and you'll notice up here that my gas price is pretty high. I believe that the default, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not even sure what the default is. But whatever it is, it's not good enough. Uh, let's just take it that it was 21. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's what it was before. So uh, what you need to do, and then uh, it remembers, the cookie remembers uh, what your last gas price is. Basically what you need to do is you need to make sure that when you go up here that you set it with a high gas price. Because the network is so overloaded now, uh, if you set it with a high gas price, it will definitely, it will... Uh, most likely be selected by miners when uh, they complete a block, okay? And most of the miners use bots to determine which transactions they'll process, and they generally sort them by highest gas price to lowest. So if you're using the default on my Ether wallet, you're going to end up somewhere in the middle, and uh, your transaction won't get processed in the next block, or the block after, or the block after. It might process in a few hours. It might go all day long without processing. It might go 24 hours without processing. So my suggestion is set the gas price as high as possible. Uh, and then you might end up, if you send one ETH, you might end up paying, uh, you know, uh, eight or nine bucks. But at least you'll get it moved. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating than moving a large amount of money uh, from your uh, Ledger Nano over to a, a exchange so you can sell it while it's high and having it just sit there pending all day as you're biting your fingernails watching the price start to drop, okay? So, uh, this is my suggestion. So let me walk you through how this works. Okay, now that I got the gas price up here, I want to send my Ether tokens. Okay, so we click here. And then uh, we're using a Ledger Wallet, so we, we're going to click Ledger Wallet. And then they give you instructions over here. And one of the things you need to notice here is that it says Verify Browser Support is Enabled in the Settings. Okay? Okay, so by default in your uh, Ethereum app on the Ledger Nano S, Browser Support is set to No or Off. And that's because the default wallet uh, is not a browser, it's uh, an app. So when we're using the My Ether Wallet website, we need to enable the browser support. So we just go over to Yes and click with both buttons, and then we're good to go. Uh, okay, so you'll notice over here uh, in this window, uh, after you've enabled browser support, uh, that uh, all you have to do is click this connect to ledger wallet okay and then this window is going to pop up and it's already selected the ledger nano s you don't have to mess around with anything else here and we just choose unlock wallet and you'll notice here it reads the balance of what's in the wallet we click unlock wallet and then we've got our transaction all ready to go now, uh, we need a, uh, an address. We need to send it somewhere. All right, and I'm going to choose Binance. Yeah. Now, you could choose GDAX, and uh, let me just briefly illustrate how that would work. I'm not going to send to GDAX today, but uh, that's a perfectly uh, 
great way to cash out if you've got uh, GDAX connected to your bank account. You'd simply transfer your ETH into GDAX and then sell it for US dollars. And then uh, once it's converted to US dollars, you just withdraw uh, the dollars to your bank account. Pretty, pretty straightforward, couple of steps. So uh, what we wanna do is make a deposit all right, and you'll notice here uh, that I'm up on the ETH US dollar. If you're not, you can just go down here. All right, ETH US dollar is active, and then we click deposit, and uh, we go over here to ETH address, and uh, it generates the address here for us. It's a hex address, right? So we can just double click that and copy. And then that would be the address that we would paste in here, all right? And you'll notice when you paste in, you get this little icon that shows you it's a valid uh, ETH address. All right. And then you just choose the amount you want to send. That's 0 0.5, 0 0.05, whatever you decide you want to send. Now, this gas limit, you really don't need to mess around with it because you've got this, uh, this gas price here. And uh, it's going to charge you uh, the, the highest price. But it is going to guarantee that your transaction goes smoothly and uh, gets done. So I'm going to show you uh, Binance because that's where I'd like to move mine today. So I'm going to go over here uh, to my Binance cryptocurrency exchange. I hope that's uh, not too confusing for you guys. Uh, I wanted to uh, briefly show you how GDAX work, but I'm not going to send a GDAX. But I hope that's clear. <laughs> that's clear to everyone. Alrighty, so uh, we just need to enter our Google Authenticator code. And uh, another uh, Crypto Dad tip, please, if you have the option, en enable uh, Google Authenticator two-factor authentication. It's a no-brainer. I'm not that crazy about this uh, app called Authy. It's a little flaky. Uh, I don't mean to, to badmouth them or anything, but uh, I trust in the Google Authenticator. Uh, it's a more pure two-factor authenticator than Authy. Authy kind of runs in a web browser, which is a little sketchy in my book. But if, feel free to comment and tell me how great Authy is down in the comments. I love to hear from you guys. We enter our Google Authenticator code, and that brings us into our account. All right, we just go over here to uh, Deposits and Withdrawals. And uh, we got an Ethereum wallet over here. And so we uh, just click deposit, because we're gonna deposit. And we generate this uh, ETH address. Same thing we did on GDAX, basically. So, but I'm not gonna send to the GDAX, I'm gonna send to the uh, Binance. So I'm just gonna paste that Binance address in there. You'll notice the icon looks different, but it is uh, an identifier. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna send 0.5. Okay, so uh, once we've done that, we've got our amount, we've got our address, uh, we've noticed that the gas price is as high as it'll go. You, uh, if you want to play with fate, you can uh, tick it down a little bit. If you, you know, trying to save a little bit of money, that's fine too. Uh, but I did this because I just wanted it to go through. I had a, a transaction that uh, ended up pending all day long yesterday, and I was biting my nails all day. So we just click generate transaction. And the first thing we need to do is uh, verify on the device. The device is asking for a verification. So I click that. All right. And once we do that, uh, it, ge it, uh, click it generates some code down here. And then there's a blue button that says send transaction. We click that. And then we uh, you know, verify that everything's fine. And you'll see there the gas limit is 60 GWEI. And uh, we're gonna pay some ETH. Usually they give you a dollar amount. They, they have it here. Um, we could calculate it, but I'm assuming that it's around eight or nine dollars. It, it might seem a bit high to some of you, but like I said, I want the transaction to go through. I don't wanna be stuck in pending hell all day long. Uh, it's not fun. All right, so uh, yes, we want the transaction to go through. And uh, this is our hash, our TX hash. Uh, we could save that uh, just in case so that, uh, I'm just gonna move it over here somewhere off screen. All right, 
So basically what I'm doing there, oh, you can see it. I'm just putting it into a text file. So I get back to it later if I need it. Uh, the, the browser's pretty much going to take care of that for me. Okay, so I can just go over here to check TX status. It opens a new tab. And it goes to the check TX status page with my uh, transaction hash already in there. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and click check TX status. There we go. Uh, okay, so I believe... Ah, it says pending. Okay, that's good. All right. So uh, the fact that it's pending uh, can give me... Let me see if I can show you. Yes. This is what a pending transaction looks like. And this is what I saw all day yesterday when I was trying to send one ETH over to one of the exchanges from my wallet. And boy, it was uh, quite frustrating. Okay. So, uh, but uh, because I sent, set my, uh, my GUI high here, 60, it's uh, most likely going to confirm there. See, bam, we just got success. Okay. So, uh, and that was really quick. Now, um, uh, GDAX will uh, send you an alert. It's kind of weird the way it works. It's going to, you're going to, first you'll get an email from Coinbase that says, you just, we just received some ETH. And uh, then after it percolates in there, that account for a little while, a few minutes, 15 10 or 15 minutes, you'll get another email that says you have successfully, successfully moved the, the ETH from your Coinbase to your GDAX. Uh, it's kind of a weird what goes on under the hood, I'm not quite sure, but you know, when you, when you use a GDAX receiving address to send ETH, it does go through Coinbase and then finally ends up in GDAX. And uh, so you get two alerts. You get the alert that from Coinbase saying it received the ETH, and then you get the alert from GDAX. Well, actually, the second alert is also from Coinbase telling you that it's been successfully moved into the GDAX account. And then uh, if it's Binance, you're going to get an email from Binance, uh, just one, telling you that uh, you've successfully sent the ETH to your account. And I believe, uh, I'm not sure that Bittrex sends you an email uh, when they receive ETH from your account. You just have to kind of go in there and check. And of course there are, uh, I'm sure you may have other exchanges where you may be sending your ETH uh, for buying and selling purposes. Um, and they all have their own different ways of alerting you or not alerting you. Uh, but the, the crux of the biscuit here is that if you want to send some ETH from your uh, Ledger Nano wallet, uh, it doesn't really work well when you use the uh, Ledger Nano wallet uh, app. Uh, it tends to fail when the network is this heavy. And so uh, my workaround was the My Ether Wallet method. But uh, when I tried it yesterday, I didn't have my gas set high enough and my transaction pending was pending all day long. And it was quite frustrating. So if any of you are having that issue, uh, this is the workaround cost you a little bit more, but at least your transaction will go through. So I hope that was helpful. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscribe button down there. And if you'd like to be alerted whenever I post a new video, just uh, click on the little bell next to the subscribe button. So once again, thanks for watching and hope you have a great night.